Hi everybody, my name is Kanan Panchal. Today we shall discuss the fundamentals of colloids. In this video, we shall go through the classification of dispersed system based on their size, different purification techniques of colloids, the shape and what effect does it have in a dispersed system, and different types of colloids and their properties. So let's begin. So a dispersed system is composed of two components, dispersed phase and the medium in which it is dispersed. And based on their size, they are classified as molecular dispersed systems, colloidal and coarse dispersed systems. This is only and only based on the size. Now the size of molecular systems are less than 1 nanometer. Colloidal ranges from 1 nanometer to 1 micrometer. And coarse dispersions are mainly greater than 1 micrometer. Now, these are the examples here belonging to the categories. So, here you can see surfactants, no doubt they are molecular. But when they aggregate to form micelles, they get colloidal inside. Most of our pharmaceutical emulsions and suspensions come under the coarse category. But if the globule size in emulsion or the particulate size in a suspension, if it ranges in say nanometers it can also get colloidal now blood is a complex dispersion it is composed of rbc's certain proteins and plasma so the major component plasma in which the other components are suspended right so plasma becomes the dispersion medium now rbc's are of 6 by 2 micrometer in dimension hence they make up the coarse dispersion in plasma whereas the other constituents like certain proteins ions nutrients etc they are present in their molecular form so they come under this category now a specific protein called the albumin is a greater than one nanometer so it is somewhere in this size range hence albumin makes up the colloidal type of dispersion in plasma hence blood is considered as a complex dispersion so here are different examples of colloidal systems please take a note of this so these are the dispersed phases these are dispersion medium and this is the name given to that type of formulation and the example so if you all clearly observe there is no gas gas type of dispersion system because a gas gas is always in molecular form and these are the colloidal systems hence there is no gas gas over here now some of the important ones to remember here are salts salts are nothing but solid in liquid foams are nothing but gas in liquid emulsions are liquid in liquid as it is oil in water water in oil then here are suspensions then you have solid aerosols and liquid aerosols both of which are dispersed in gas phase okay so please take a note of this now to understand specific surface area let us look at this animation here the single cube here is dividing itself into multiple units hence the volume or the weight of this single cube is going to remain same or equal to the sum of the volume or weight of these smaller units however the surface area will be changing the surface area of this single cube is going to be lesser than the total sum area of these multiple cubes now this is because as the cube is dividing itself into smaller units new surfaces are being exposed therefore the surface is surface area is increasing hence the specific surface area is defined as the surface area per unit weight or volume of the material now colloidal dispersions possess to have a very high specific surface area now some of the examples are here platinum itself cannot be used as a catalyst but in its colloidal form it is known as platinum black and this form helps in the action of catalysis also when uh, the gold salt increases in the particle size the color of that colloidal system changes from red to blue another example is antimony and arsenic trisulfide when from a coarse dispersion it tends to come into a colloidal size range the color changes from red to yellow now these colloidal systems have certain purification techniques 
certain methods by which we can obtain them and they are dialysis electrodialysis and ultrafiltration so let's look at them ahead so let us look at the purification techniques the first is dialysis now this follows the principle of diffusibility that is the ability of molecules to flow from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration so here we have two chambers which is separated by a membrane usually made of collodion or cellophane material now the property of this membrane is that it allows only the passage of subcolloidal range particles or molecular range particles so the concentration here is high and over here it is zero so slowly these subcolloidal range particles that is the black particles will move from compartment a to compartment b till equilibrium is achieved so finally at the end of equilibrium in a compartment we obtain our colloidal dispersion now to hasten this movement process liquid from the b compartment can be kept on removing so as to maintain high concentration gradient now the second method is electrodialysis even this is similar to dialysis the only difference is that electric potential is used to increase the rate of movement so here you can see is the dialyzing membrane here and you have a colloidal system inside and out will be the movement of the impurity and these impurities are usually ionic impurity so there here there is a phenomena of electro decantation which is nothing but the concentration of charged colloidal particles at one side and at the base of the membrane so this is called electro decantation now the third method is ultrafiltration so now in this method also we have two compartments but here there is application of pressure so either pressure is applied on this side or suction is applied on this side now that will allow again the movement of only subcolloidal range of particles and in this chamber you will obtain your colloidal system but what happens here is due to pressure the particle absorption at the membrane may block the pores this may happen at all the three cases now electrical repulsion can also occur only if the membrane and the colloidal particles both carry same charge so this may hinder your process of purification so let us understand the shape of colloid as shape can influence the flow sedimentation and osmotic pressure of your colloidal system it can also have an effect on the pharmacological action of your formulations made of such system so what happens is that as the particles extend there's an increase in the specific surface area now as the specific surface area increases more surfaces will be exposed and hence there'll be more opportunity for attractive forces between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium to develop now this can also affect the stability now in favorable environment what happens is that the colloidal system exposes maximum surface area just like a hedgehog and in adverse condition it coils up itself and reduces the exposed surface area so let us look at different types of colloids they are divided into three namely lyophilic lyophobic and association colloid lyophilic colloids are further divided into two hydrophilic salts and lipophilic colloids now hydrophilic salts produce lyophilic type of colloids in aqueous media the examples of hydrophilic salts are gelatin acacia insulin etc now lipophilic colloids are formed in non aqueous or organic solvent hence the name lipophilic colloid and the examples in this category are rubber polystyrene etc now let us look at lyophilic colloids they have an affinity for the dispersion medium hence they are solvent loving colloids therefore there is philic in the name okay solvent loving colloid they easily disperse in water okay or any other 
solvent in which the colloidal dispersion is to be formed so they are spontaneously formed by the method of dispersion the example here are acacia tragacanth rubber etc so mostly they are organic in nature now a uh, material that forms a lyophilic colloid system in one liquid say example water may not form a lyophilic colloid in some other liquid so it depends on what is the dispersion media used now next is lyophobic colloids they have no affinity or little affinity for the dispersion medium that is they are solvent hating therefore phobic is in its name example here are gold silver sulfur that is mostly they are inorganic in nature so let us look at different methods of preparation of a lyophobic colloid they are broadly divided into two dispersion and condensation so in dispersion a coarse particle is broken down into colloidal size range hence it is called top down from higher size to a lower size and in condensation opposite happens it goes from a lower size to higher size that is sub colloidal range to colloidal range hence it is called bottom up now there are three sub methods of dispersion method electric arc ultrasonic treatment and colloidal mill so in colloidal mill there is a static stator and a rotating rotor now there is space between which the substances which are to be broken down into colloidal size range are filled so now this rotor will rotate about this stator and due to shearing force the coarse particles will be broken down into the colloidal size range now what happens in ultrasonic treatment is that ultrasonic waves are passed and these produce alternating regions of cavitation and compression in the medium now these cavities produce collapse with great force and cause the breakdown of particles now this happens at 20000 cps now condensation can be brought about by two methods supersaturation and chemical reaction so now let's look at association colloids association colloids are colloids formed by surfactants we know surfactants are sub colloidal in size as they exceed the critical micelle concentration they aggregate to form micelles now these micelles are colloidal in size and this is nothing but the association colloid and micelles and surfactants both exist in equilibrium so based on the surfactant the nature association colloids can be either anionic cationic or nonionic and their diameter are mostly about 50 angstrom now aggregation number as we study is nothing but the number of surfactants aggregating to form a micelle and that usually ranges from about 50 to 100 now micellarization reduces the free energy of the system please take a note of this now micelles can be either spherical in shape they can be inverse or reverse in shape or they can be laminar now spherical micelles are usually formed in aqueous media in non aqueous media inverse or reverse micelles are formed now even after you exceed cmc the spherical micelles become laminar in shape okay and these laminar and spherical micelles exist in equilibrium now counter ions or jejunians are nothing but some sodium ions which are attracted to the surface of the micelle okay that is why that reduces the overall negative charge So I hope you all understood the basic fundamentals of colloids. Thank you.